Best to keep both hands on the wheel when you're driving this 2003 Caterham convertible. But will we even need to drive cars in the future? A question for David Pogue. Remember a few years ago, there were a whole lot of headlines about self-driving cars. Whatever happened to that? Well, they're closer than you think. Already, a Tesla on cruise control can pass the slowpoke ahead of you all by itself. And check this out. If you're on the highway and there's a GPS destination, the car will suggest changing lanes to get into the exit ramp lane. Then it will signal and actually take the exit for you. Watch this. Now, the car is slowing down to the correct speed limit for the exit ramp. That chime means, back to you, human. I'm going to come to a stop and you take over. And self-driving taxis are available in four American cities, with more on the way. We've got a self-driving option right oh, here in the app. Yeah, self-driving requested. And there we are, our self-driving ride. Jody Kelman met me in Las Vegas. She's a director of Lyft's self-driving taxi program. 40,000 people have already done it. This is becoming incredibly normal for people. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> have fun. You know, these cars never get drowsy. They're never impaired by alcohol. They're never distracted by their cell phone. Carl Yanyama is the president of self-driving at Aptiv. You know, it pretty much still looks like a regular car. Which builds self-driving technology for Lyft and other fleets. We've got 21 sensors, very seamlessly integrated. We had these LIDARs in front. We got radars. We have some camera systems kind of looking forward. The first thing I noticed about this driverless taxi is that it had a driver. They're ready to take over in case the car sees something unexpected or does something that we didn't anticipate. What do you mean? In Singapore, we were driving one day. We saw crossing the road a fellow in a chicken suit. The and car didn't recognize you, the chicken suit. The car wasn't quite sure what was going on. During our 45-minute ride, the safety human never touched the controls. The driving was smooth, safe, and polite which I could not say for all the human drivers around us. This is the polar opposite of an autonomous car. Yes, you're controlling everything, which is kind of what makes driving an old car like this so wonderful. Jason Torchinsky is the author of Robot Take the Wheel. He took the wheel of a 1966 MG. When you're driving, there's a satisfaction that happens because you feel everything. Like when you're in a self-driving car, it's gonna be like taking a plane. You get in in one place, you look at your phone for three hours, and you get off at a new place. So are you um, a self-driving hater? No, by no means. I think there's a place for self-driving cars, absolutely. But I never wanna give up my own ability to drive, right. I think. The road to self-driving hasn't been entirely smooth. Five people have died in self-driving car accidents. Computers aren't perfect. Of course, as Aptiv's Carl Yanyema points out, human drivers have a much worse record. Worldwide, over 1.3 million people dying per year on the road. And we believe that we can dramatically reduce that number. Those are preventable deaths. I'm sure there are people who are watching this broadcast going, you'll never catch me in one of those things. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those people? I say go to Vegas and try it for yourself. In Vegas, we've never had an accident caused by our technology. And once people get in the car and feel how safe it is and how comfortable and smooth, they're believers. Maybe you're not convinced. Well, don't worry. For the foreseeable future, driverless cars will be more than safe, comfortable, and smooth. They'll also be optional. Thank you.